brothers, like many of you, yesterday I saw the news online that rapper, entrepreneur, father, and husband, Young Dolph, had been murdered in his hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. Now, I don't want to get into uh, the gossip of it, the hearsay, she say, speculation. I always want to dive into the lesson that can be learned. And uh, what I can pull out of my own life, my own experiences, to let you know, hey, man, I'm just not talking. This is real. This stuff happens. Uh, so let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Now, I got to be honest with you guys. I can't name one song that uh, the rapper Young Dolph has made. You know, maybe it's in my subconscious somewhere, and, and that's not a dig at him. It just wasn't my flavor. You know, he's, he's a young man. Um, actually, he's, he's older than I actually thought, but he makes, you know, young music. Uh, and, and it just wasn't, you know, something I could vibe with. Uh, but I would see him, you know, constantly uh, popping up in editorials, or if I'm browsing through YouTube, or he's giving an interview. Now I have listened to a few interviews. So yeah, the weird thing with me, man, it, it's it, there are a lot of artists, uh, actors or musicians that I may not uh, be really into their work or know their work, but I'm digging the personality. So I may, you know, tune in to an interview. You know, if I see that. They're doing the interview. I tune in automatically because I'm getting something from the interviews or they inspired me. So although I can't name you one song, you know, he, he's created, his brother's created. He inspired me, you know, because of his hustle, his entrepreneur spirit, his independent spirit. I think recently, uh, as recent as, like, man, maybe this was three weeks ago or a month ago, he was uh, he was doing an interview, a sit down with Gilly the Kid and Wallow on their podcast. Uh, I think it's called Million Dollar Game, and he was saying that uh, he turned down between nineteen million and twenty two million uh, to be with a record company, signed with a record company. He decided to stay independent, and uh, I thought that was admirable. I thought that was. Uh, Man, I thought that was a boss move. Uh, that's a true independent spirit uh, to do that. You know, a lot of people will not turn down that kind of money, but he wanted his independence and, and probably creative control and to be able to put out music when he wanted to and uh, just to move how he wanted to move. So I respect the brother. So I've listened to a few of his interviews, although I can't name one, one song. And so... Uh, yeah, I could be into the person, into the mind of a person, but not really digging, you know, their music. Man, I do that with a, with a lot of artists. Uh, I'm into their personality, but not into their their, uh, their art necessarily. And that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but a brother was murdered in his hometown, man. Let, let's dig into that. Um... I have been seeing online for years and, and through interviews, uh, like I said, that he's given and other people have given that, that there was tension, that there was beef between camps. Uh, there was a split within Memphis uh, because of certain brothers. Um, you know, there, there are several folds to that. There's several layers to that uh, that I want to get into. Uh, for one, brothers, when you uh, have an opportunity, or you've been blessed to make it out uh, of the hood. Uh, that's just what that is. And you have to embrace that, man. You have to get out the hood. Um, no way around it. Can you visit? It all depends. It all depends on... Um, who those people uh, 
know you as fundamentally before you had the fame. Um, but I definitely wouldn't stay in the hood uh, for several reasons. And it also depends on um, have you slighted anyone? Do you have any known enemies? You know, you can have some enemy you don't know of. We all have some people that hate us, that envy us, that we have no knowledge of. But, you know, that's a different thing from having a known adversary, a known enemy. Uh, so when you do make it, and you have these known enemies, there's one or two things, or one or three things you gotta do. You gotta stay away, right? Or you gotta go in heavily secured, or you gotta have a sit down uh, and make peace with those individuals. I, I don't see any other option, you know? Uh, now, the, the reason, uh, people like to come back to their neighborhood. And the reason it's hard for people to accept the ones that have made it, to accept the reemergence, to accept the re-entry into the neighborhood. Uh, there's two reasons, there's two different things going on. There's a paradox uh, and both people are dealing with things. Uh, both are dealing with insecurities. So the person who so-called made it, and he's not had the opportunity, the means to make it out, and he's doing quite well. He wants to come back because that's the wound. That's the wound. That's who nurtured him. That's who molded him. That's uh, where his his personality his uh, character, his self-esteem was molded. Those are the people also who know the integral uh, part of him, the fundamental part of him for different layers or different, uh, uh, yeah, different layers start pulling back uh, to show who he is today and to show where he's going to be in the future. They knew him at the ground level. Right, and so uh, there's a comfort level there. He knows, uh, for the most part, who hates him and why, who loves him and why, and so there's a comfort level. Uh, he could be his fundamental self, and. Uh, there's an emotional attachment, I would say even a mental attachment to that neighborhood, to that community, to those people. Uh, when he comes in town, the looks on their face, the, the twinkle in their eyes when they see him, he, he won't get that uh, with his new friends, with his new community, right? Because they don't have history. A lot of these people, man, you, you grew up in uh, grade school with, you played in the sandbox with. Uh, you guys probably fought one another. You guys probably fought side by side against others. Uh, you know, the girls, they knew you before puberty. Uh, there's many, many stories you guys can share and tell and laugh at and reminisce on. And with your new community, they don't know that side of you. And you really don't know who hates or loves you in this new environment. And you don't know if they can accept all of you in this new environment, the fundamental part of you, that, that foundation. They just know these other layers. They know the, the, the refined SD booker, but they don't know this other SD booker, you know. Actually, this, this other person, this old community, they don't even call him SD Booker. They call him Book. So just like in Dolph Case, man, they, they, uh, Memphis has a warm 
uh, spied his heart. And for many, he uh, he lightens them up and motivates them. You know, uh, the money he has now, where he can live now, or could live, he doesn't motivate those people. Those people got as just much money or more than him. He doesn't motivate them. They don't, they don't light up when they see him. They know him uh, most likely on a surface level. But he feels like the hometown knows the real him, the fundamental part of him, the flaws. And, and they accept them. And so uh, that's a nurturing, that's a nurturing feeling, you know, to be connected to the foundation, to the womb, person, the community that birthed you. Now, on the flip side, it's hard for many of these people to accept him or anyone coming back to the hood because uh, they don't feel good about themselves. And they could be possibly thinking, why him? Man, I knew him when he was this. He didn't have anything. Or he can't rap. That should be me. You know, you have those people. Uh, you have those people who are not doing well, feel like you should uh, help them out and give back to them. Uh, maybe you guys were tight at one time. and. Uh, they feel like you owe them something. You know, you got that, that group too. So every time you come around, it's a reminder of uh, what they are not, what they did not do with their lives. And, and, uh, and, and, and what it is, man, it's self-hate. They hadn't accepted themselves and they don't love themselves because you can be a success and not reach the heights of a young dog, but you gotta be secure in yourself. Just because you, you, you didn't become a, a millionaire or a financially wealthy person doesn't mean you're a failure, right? But the person who feels like they're a failure because they didn't become uh, a millionaire or they didn't uh, fulfill their purpose or goals, they feel that way because they know they left things on the table. They left things unturned. They didn't finish the job. So the problem is really within. But in your success, you are a mirror. You, they have to face you. They don't want to face it. They're with their woman. They got to face you. You know, your woman. She might know the person, and she knows <laughs> uh, uh, the humble beginnings of that person. And she knows you, you all went to school together, right? And they're there, and you're here. But I'm telling you, man, even with that, your woman would be okay if you was given 100% and, and, and uh, doing the most with what you were given, you know? So the failure is not not becoming uh, a millionaire or financially wealthy. The failure is in not doing the most with what you were given. That's where the failure lies. And, and so uh, Young Dolph or people like Young Dolph, they're just an excuse for people who are not fulfilling their purpose. They're just an excuse to hate, to envy. And so you got two conflicted things going on here, man. You got the young dog who's attached emotionally to the community. This is where he feels most at home. But then you got people that are at home in Memphis. They don't want to see him coming around, right? Uh, you know, now let's say uh, two camps are into it, hypothetically. And uh, someone goes down with one camp is willing to take young Dolph out, right? That's just an excuse that I'm down with this camp and my camp is beefing with his camp, I'm gonna take him out. 
That's an excuse. That's a cover up still for you not fulfilling your purpose and fulfilling your goals. So let me tell you, man, a man that is on a mission, pursuing his purpose, has something to live for and has something to die for. He's not worried about any beef, who's getting along with who, this count, that count. Man, he has bigger fish to fry. This brother has uh, kids or family. He has people depending on him. If he dies or he gets arrested, people, people suffer. That's a man on a mission. That's a focused man. That's a disciplined man. That's a man that has some things going on. So any brother that's willing to kill another brother over something senseless is willing to kill a brother uh, from a premeditated uh, standpoint is a brother that is not taking care of his business. Listen, man, I can't afford to go to the penitentiary. I can't afford to be under investigation. You know, if, if I die, people suffer. You know, people feel the impact. And so uh, that means I'm, I got purpose. That means I'm fulfilling my goals. Uh, I'm responsible, I'm accountable for people. Uh, a brother who has no accountability, no responsibility, is a dangerous brother, dangerous brother. And, uh, you know, brothers, I know in our community, if we don't go back, you know, we, we uh, can get the stigma or the rumors can spread, gossip can spread that we think we're too good. Uh, now, we, we uh, have forgotten where we come from. No, we've become bougie. Man, you got to uh, put a deaf ear to all that and a blind eye to all that, that talk. You got to know why you're here and you got to be focused on the mission. You can't please everyone. And, uh, you know, I've seen some, some, some so-called powerful men uh, from the hood go back to the hood, but uh, they go back to visit. They don't go back to live or reside. They're not going to the corner store to pick up cookies for their mom. Uh, the whole family is out. And uh, they will go back to do benefits, but they're always heavily secured. You take a guy like Jay Prince, the CEO of rap a lot He goes back to Fifth Ward and gives back a lot. His brother is always heavily secured. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll see a few brothers behind him and in front of him with those choppers. I've seen Birdman go back to New Orleans, you know, uh, to, to do charity work, give out turkeys, give out coats, bikes, uh, to speak. Their brother is always heavily secured. That don't make you soft. That don't make you weak. That makes you wise. You got to understand, everybody doesn't love you. Everybody uh, does not support you. And you got some people out there that envy you. You know, uh, listen, man, I'm no celebrity. I don't have these brothers' money in the now. But even when I go back to the hood, get a haircut, or just to drop through to support, you know, I always, always got my pistol on me. Always. Uh, because I know, I just know how people think. You know, uh, it, it's very, uh, it can be very cutthroat. And uh, it can be very judgmental. And people want to expose you and remind you of uh, where you come from and who you are. Uh, they want to take you off that that pedestal that they put you on subconsciously. You didn't put yourself on it necessarily. They put you on it subconsciously. And uh, a lot of times you just want to be normal. Uh, quick story. 
probably 30 years ago, uh, my oldest brother had uh, began preaching. He was an associate preacher for the church we grew up in. He, he actually now is the senior pastor there in the church we grew up in. Uh, he became a senior pastor maybe two years ago now. But uh, so he was around 21. <clears throat> sorry, he was around 21 when he began preaching. And uh, he's six years older than me. I'm 15 at the time. Now, my brother is uh, known as a star basketball player uh, in the community. One of the, probably one, not dope, no doubt, one of the best point guards to come out of the DFW. Uh, but, you know, we grew up in the hood. He's also known as a gambler. He's also known uh, as a player uh, of women. And, uh, you know, to, to, to smoke the weed and drink drink the, the juice. Uh, this is what he was known for. You know, nothing extreme, but this was a normal thing for, for many brothers in the hood, right? Uh, so he began preaching. He took to the calling. He began preaching. You know, of course, the word spread around the neighborhood, around the community. And uh, many people couldn't adapt. Many people couldn't adapt to this to this new uh, this new brother. Uh, They're like, "What?" You know, they didn't they didn't see that side of him. They didn't know that side of him. Uh, now, the family we always knew he's probably going to head in that direction. We knew another side. You know, the streets of the community knew another side, but uh, it wasn't surprising to the family. But I knew, you know, there would be backlash, there would be gossip. People would think it's a hustle. Uh, I just knew this. At 15, I knew this. So one day, he comes by the house and he goes, uh, hey, but let's, uh, let's go play some ball at the gym, at the rec. And immediately, man, I had a bad feeling. I had a bad feeling. Uh, I said, man, you, you sure you want to go? I said, yeah, yeah. But in my in my mind, I'm thinking, man, it's gonna be some mess. Uh, somebody's gonna try him, and I'm gonna be involved, and it's just gonna be mess. I just I just know how this thing works. Even at 15, I just knew about jealousy, uh, and people not wanting to accept, you know, the change or the evolution in you. So we go to the gym, and I'm uneasy the whole time. Uh, he gets picked, of course. You know, he's still ball at that at that point. I don't get picked. I got next up. Uh, I'm good, but I'm still 15. He's a grown man, 20, 21 plus years old. So, man, you know, the, the, the game is aggressive already. Uh, Couple of cats being super aggressive with them. These are cats you grew up with, uh, brothers, and uh, I just, I just knew it. Man. I was like, man, I knew it. And so, at one point, he goes up for a layup, and one of the brothers, these are blood brothers, you know, one of the brothers on the other team, man, just takes his legs out uh, as he's going up for the layup. Man, they they my brother got up, they squared up. The other gentleman's brother came out next to him. So we got two brothers squared up against my brother. So I get off the bench. I come onto the court. So now it's two brothers squared up against two brothers. Now I'm only 15, uh, but I'm taller than all three. I'm taller than my brother, <laughs> and I'm taller than these other two brothers, you know. Uh but uh, so we score up, you know, and uh, nothing happened. It died down. But I remember, I remember one of the brothers. My brother had known since little league. Man, they played little league ball together, grew up together, went to school together. He yelled as he walked away, "Fake ass preacher!" That's what he yelled, "Fake ass preacher." 
You see what I'm saying? I knew this was this was ha this would happen. This was in his heart. This was on his mind. This has this has been a topic of discussion. This has been some gossip going on behind the scenes. Uh, and my brother wasn't a celebrity. He was just changing the course of his life. He was just doing something granted. It was totally opposite of how he was living and what they knew him for. But people, some people just couldn't accept it. They wouldn't say, no, you ain't, you ain't what you say you are. You're fake. I'm going to expose you. I don't respect it. You know, uh, I guess if my, my brother was straight laced and, and, and did nothing uh, growing up, had, had no experiences, uh, no, I guess no, no uh, toxic experiences, I guess you could say, it would be easier to accept him going into the ministry. Um, it's all about your viewpoint. You know, some would say a guy that's had experiences is the best guy to be a minister because he can relate to the masses. Uh, all about perspective. But my point is, some people just will not accept when you change, you know, uh, when you elevate and you evolve. And so, man, you got to cut off that emotional cord, that emotional tie, uh, and pursue your purpose and be about your mission. Because if not, man, uh, some of these brothers will take you out. I'm talking about over the smallest things, over the smallest uh, evolution, you know, because like I said, you are a mirror. And every time they look at you, it reminds them subconsciously, man, I didn't take care of my business. All right, so hey, watch out guys, protect yourself at all times. Uh, be wise, you know, it's better to be wise than brave, uh, but I respect both. Let me know what you think in the comments. For me to you as always, love, peace.